Blocking traffic, disrupting sport events, and throwing soup onto paintings. Just Stop Oil have been making headlines recently with their bold protest methods. So just Stop Oil. 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 Just Stop Oil protests has disrupted a performance of Les Mis. Their aims are to stop the UK government from licensing any new oil, gas, and coal projects. Whilst Just Stop Oil would argue that the scale of the climate change issue demands radical action, others question whether their methods are counterproductive as they could potentially alienate the very people they aim to persuade. Middle class, go. Middle class. So, which perspective is correct? Is all publicity good publicity? Or are the protests ultimately doing more harm than good? Supporters of Just Stop Oil often draw historical comparisons to the suffragettes, who were deemed controversial in their time, but who history now looks upon favourably, recognising their pivotal role in advancing women's rights to vote. In the Just Stop Oil debate though, the question is not just about the legitimacy of the cause, but also how effective their methods are in changing people's opinions. As well as drawing parallels with protest movements like the suffragettes, the civil rights movement or the Stonewall riots, it might be instructive to consider the story of Dr. Ignaz Semmelweis. In 19th century Vienna, Dr. Semmelweis was disturbed by the high mortality rates in childbirth at his hospital, which he put down to doctors not washing their hands after autopsies. By introducing a chlorinated hand wash in his ward, Semmelweis managed to reduce deaths by 90%. Yet, despite his clear success, his findings were rejected by other doctors, who were offended by the idea that they could be the problem. Semmelweis, understandably frustrated, lashed out at his critics, writing open letters to doctors calling them murderers and assassins responsible for the slaughter and massacre of women and children. This further alienated him from those he sought to convince. He was exiled from the medical community and tragically died in an asylum at the age of 47. Handwashing in hospitals would only become standard practice decades later. Semmelweis's story shows that being correct isn't always enough to convince people to a cause. The way a message is delivered is also crucial. Uh, the criminality of our, of our government, who is engaged in a project against, uh, basically killing the UK population. But if you want to have an impact, and firstly, I'm not sure whether that language is going to help when it comes to lobbying. Or genocidal plans. I mean, the it's, government's it's genocidal. genocidal yeah. at the moment. Actually... Beyond the actual inconvenience of Just Stop Oil's disruptions, one reason why their protests can inspire such anger is because they can be interpreted as threats to one's integrity. Claude Steele's self-affirmation theory emphasises that everyone has a fundamental need to see themselves as good, moral individuals. During Just Stop Oil's protests, motorists and spectators may feel accused of wrongdoing for driving or watching sports, or for not being as committed to the climate issue as they should be. This can lead to anger directed at the protesters. This anger is intensified when combined with class resentment. If criticism seems to come from those of a higher socio-economic standing, it adds a layer of perceived sanctimony and condescension to the mix. People are unable to pay their bills! Mainstream news outlets capitalise on this resentment by framing Just Stop Oil protests as a class struggle. They often spotlight working class people trying to do their job amidst a cost of living crisis, pitted against privileged middle class activists who are disrupting their lives. Conflict and drama generate clicks and comments feeding social media algorithms which then spread the content to a wider audience. News programs then offer Just Stop Oil an interview platform, which they might not have been given had they used less radical methods. When you do things that are the same and don't get, attract, don't get attention, they don't cause a national conversation. Rage-baked content attracts attention, but it raises questions about whether the resulting division is worth it. Critics of disruptive protests often point to unfavourable public sentiment in opinion polls, However, this does not necessarily show that these groups are ineffective. Just Stop Oil's goal isn't popularity. It's to halt government investment in fossil fuels. Success, in their view, lies in gaining more support for this goal and stimulating broader activism to influence government policy change. In 2022, the Social Change Lab commissioned a YouGov survey of 2,000 nationally representative UK adults on their opinions of climate change and Just Stop Oil. Despite the disruptions, public support for anti-fossil fuel policies remain consistent before, during and after significant protests. This challenges the argument that Just Stop Oil's actions harm the climate movement by alienating people, although their methods weren't shown to significantly boost support either. 
Whilst it's difficult to establish causality in survey studies, it's worth noting that after the protests, there was a slight increase in people's stated intention for activism. The number of people willing to discuss climate change with friends and family, contact their MPs, or attend legal climate protests in the next year rose from 8.7% to 11.3%. If these intentions translate into action, this is promising for advocates of non-violent protests. The 3.5% rule in political science posits that when 3.5% of a population actively participate in non-violent protests, it frequently results in major political change. This principle is grounded in Chenoweth and Stefan's study of resistance movements from 1900 to 2006, showing that no government could withstand protests that engaged this percentage of the populace. When debating Just Stop Boyle's methods, it's essential to understand the gravity of the climate crisis and the potential consequences of not reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The UN's climate panel predicts significant sea level rises by 2050, which will potentially flood many major cities across the globe with the areas marked in red expected to face severe annual flooding. If this comes to pass, a few hours of blocked traffic or the cancellation of a snooker match might seem trivial in retrospect. What on earth motivates behaviour like that? Whatever the cause, nothing justifies behaviour of that nature. So, what's your perspective on Just Stop Oil's methods? Will they help bring about policy change or are their disruptions too alienating?